What's up, YouTube, and welcome back to Retro Gamer Gen X's Retro Gaming and Computing Channel. Today's episode is going to be a special one because I actually saved a retro 1990s laptop from recycling just the other day. So I've got a NEC Versa laptop here that is from like 1996, 97. And uh, yeah, they were actually going to recycle this at the recycling center, and I kind of just saw it in the pile, and I was like, ooh, I'm going to go ahead and take that. A couple reasons for that is because this same, almost same exact model of laptop I had back in the early 2000s when my wife was pregnant, and while she was in labor, I was actually on this laptop uh, playing NES games with Nesticle, the emulator Nesticle, if you guys remember that way back in the day. So it kind of holds a special uh, part in my heart uh, because my original one died years ago. And so if this one actually works, we're going to see if it does. We're going to get it plugged in and see if it actually works. That'd be pretty cool. But uh, let's go ahead and get this over to the bench and we'll check it out. Get off my plane. <laughs> Okay, guys, so you can see here we have the NEC Versa 6010H laptop here. And, uh, yeah, definitely looks like it's all complete. has all the keys. Mouse pad looks good. Everything looks kind of good in this. So we'll kind of take a 360 tour of this first, and uh, then we'll get into trying to plug it in and get, see if it actually works. So here we have the 12-inch screen here, and then we have the brightness control right here to... Basically, turn up the brightness and not like all these old classic 90s laptops. It has the LCD um, display screen here, which basically tells you if your hard drive's working, if the floppy's working. Uh, basically, all that kind of information is actually on here, what power management mode you're in, all that kind of stuff. Here we have the reset button and the power button. And, of course, all the keys the mouse pad, and the two mouse buttons. All right, so that's what's on the inside there. Now, the latch actually still works. Floppy drive um, actually can come out of the system here. And I was reading through the instruction manual for this thing, and it sounds like, as you guys can see, it actually comes out. You can actually replace the floppy drive with a CD-ROM drive in here as well. Now here is the IR sensor. Um, if you guys weren't familiar with that, uh, you can transfer information from computer to computer or from like a PDA, um, personal digital assistant with the infrared uh, files and other things like that using this back in the day. All right, and then right here, we have the hard drive, which honestly, I don't know what size hard drive this is, We'll have to take a look once we get it all booted. I don't feel like really taking it all apart just to find out the size. Um, but here on the side, we have what would be the modem hookup. So if you had the modem uh, dongle, that's where that would actually go. Here's your volume control, headphones, speakers, input, and microphone. And this is where your power cable goes in right there. And if we turn it to the back here, it's got a few different uh, slots here, <laughs> panel that you can open. So here you have your PS2 uh, mouse and keyboard connector. Here you have your parallel connector for your printer. Here we have a docking station connector. So obviously there was a docking station made for this thing. And back here we have the serial uh, connector. Actually, this is serial. <laughs> and this is your VGA connector for external modems. 
on the side here uh, we have your PC what is this called the PCM AI slot um, and it has a 3com Ethernet Ethernet card in here that was in the laptop when I got it but unfortunately like everything else it's missing the dongle here so I can't actually connect it to the internet or to the Ethernet I should say to my network and then here's where the battery would have went but obviously the battery is long gone and out of this thing so this is a basically a complete computer so let's go ahead and get this thing plugged in and see if it'll actually work for us all right as you guys can see here we have the laptop all set up on the table so now what we're going to go ahead and do we are going to go ahead and plug in this proprietary uh, power jack adapter thing here now this has 18.5 volts coming out both the first two prongs and then the the negative is the bottom prong here so we're going to go ahead and plug this into the laptop now i have already tested the adapter here to make sure it's putting out the right kind of power all right so we got it plugged in there and let's go ahead and do the smoke test here guys let's go ahead and turn this thing on and see if she runs and it's sounding good looks like we have like a water faucet symbol on here according to the book that's the power management mode it looks like she's booting up look at that guys wow so i wonder what this thing is running now mine was running windows 98 let's see what this thing is running pinning a 133 processor that's a whole lot but windows 95 is what this thing is running so that's pretty cool And man, that, that hard drive, you can see the hard drive indicator popping up here on the panel as well. Well, that hard drive is clunky, but it's working. <laughs> I had a Lamborghini on here. Ooh, I'm going to go ahead and uh, blink this out, guys, because it has company name and everything on here. So I don't want that to go out on the internet. But uh, it does have a login window, which kind of sucks. But Windows 95 is infamous for not being very secure. So if it does have a login like this, that's because it used to connect uh, via uh, the network. So it had some kind of NT drivers on it to be able to connect to a network. But to get past that, all we got to do is hit cancel on here. And it should put us into a guest profile. Wow, it does have some sound too. So amazing, guys. It looks like this thing actually does run. So let's see what's actually in this thing. It should tell us how big the hard drive is, at least, I would think. God, it's been so long since I used Windows 95. So it looks like it's a whole one gigabyte hard drive in this thing, guys, where uh, it looks like 55, 555 megabytes is used up and there's 476 megabytes still on here. So that's pretty cool. So I don't want to dive too deep into this, seeing that this was a company computer. Um, I really don't know what was on here, so I don't want to be really digging into it and finding out now obviously off a of camera i'll be looking at this and then probably reformatting the hard drive and everything but uh honestly i can't get it hooked up to the network unless i got a wireless card or if i got the dongle for that network card but i did find a floppy drive or a floppy disk that i have a c64 emulator on here so let's see if the actual floppy works guys and no it doesn't that sounds horrible so to me it sounds like uh sounds like the motor's just spinning so it probably has a broken belt or a stretched out belt inside of that floppy drive yeah that does not sound good at all okay we're just gonna take that out <laughs> 
So it definitely does boot up and it definitely does run. So some pretty cool stuff there, guys. I can't complain. Looks like everything is kind of working on here. Now, obviously, I'm going to do some more testing off camera. But just to see that this thing initially does work like this, that is crazy and amazing. And I'm so happy that it does. Let's go ahead and get this thing powered off. And let's take a look at that floppy drive. We'll take this out and take it apart and just kind of confirm whether or not it is the... Uh, if it's a belt inside that is stretched out or broken, that's what it kind of sounds like. It just sounds like the motor in there is just spinning freely. Uh, so let's go ahead and get this thing shut down. If you guys remember Windows 95, you don't want to just turn off the power. You want to go through the whole shutdown process here. So let's go ahead and do that. The last thing I want to do is mess up this 30-year-old hard drive that's in this thing. 25 year old hard drive I should say and looks like uh, shut down on us so let me go ahead and get this thing out here and we will check out this floppy drive just like that all right so I'm gonna go ahead and put the computer over to the side here and we're going to go ahead and uh, get this floppy drive taken apart and we'll take a look at it. And I'm almost 100% positive, guys, that it's going to be the belt that's either completely rotted away or it's just stretched beyond the point where it's actually going to spin anymore. So let me go ahead and get everything set up and I'll be back in just a minute. All righty, guys. So we got the uh, floppy drive taken out. So let's go ahead and get this thing taken apart. I've already taken out these first initial screws here. Uh, let me go ahead and get a screwdriver here and take out the rest of these now what i am thinking is that this the standard run-of-the-mill floppy drive that most laptops back in the day used to have inside of them so we'll definitely check that out to make sure that is the case but i'm almost beginning to think that's what it is well, this should just pop right off. Yep. And let's see what kind of floppy it is. FD1238H. So, yes. <laughs> and it's an NEC. So, if you guys are familiar with the PC98, the NEC PC98, uh, it had the FD1238T floppy drive in it. And so, this is basically the same hard or floppy drive that is inside of the um the pc 98 very interesting now let's see if we can just take it apart like this without having to take it out of the caddy that would be really nice if that's the case if we have to take it out of the caddy it's going to be kind of a pain we'll see i probably will have to but we'll see I just want to get to where we can get to the belt and make sure that's what the problem is. But with the motor actually spinning, and I actually heard the uh, stepper. Okay, so the light turned off. But I actually heard the stepper work as well. The stepper motor work. So I think we will be good to go as far as all that's concerned. Yeah, there we go. So, here we are. Now, yeah, this is basically like I thought. Hopefully you guys can see with the light turning off. It looks like my light got a little too hot, so it turned itself off. But there should be a spindle right here with the belt going around. And this is the actual motor right here. So, to be able to check this, we're going to have to take this top assembly, the mechanical assembly, off and get to the inside to where the belt is. And it looks like there's only a couple screws here. One here. And I bet you there's some here in the front, too. Yeah, there's one here. one 
Tudor. Yeah, I've taken apart. Oh, that, the flap just completely came out, so that's good. Um, I've taken apart a few of these uh, drives like this, and in fact, a lot of the Amiga drives, the Matsumi drives, are a lot like this as well. So this should. I gotta lift up the head here. This should just pop right out. And yep, there we go. And so there is the belt right here, guys. So let's see. Oh yeah, that thing is completely stretched out. Yeah, look at <laughs> I, I don't know if you guys can see that, but yeah, that belt is, there is no tension on that belt anymore. It is completely stretched out. So I'm going to have to try to order a belt for this, but this is an odd size belt really tiny tiny belt so it's not like your standard belt that goes into like a tape deck or um, a regular disc drive where it's thicker uh, it's only a half a millimeter so I'm gonna have to search around and try to find the actual belt for this to get this fixed but that looks to be what the problem is with the laptop guys well anyway I'm gonna go ahead and get on the internet here start searching for parts for this thing so we can get this thing up and running and hopefully uh, this thing should be able to run Doom. So it'd be kind of cool to play Doom on this thing. But uh, yeah, anyway, guys, I just wanted to thank all my subs, all my viewers. Once again, if you like the content, go ahead and hit that like. If you like it that much, then don't forget to hit subscribe. Also, don't forget to hit that notification bell. That way you get notifications every time I drop new content like this. And if you want to go ahead and support the channel, don't forget to drop a super thanks down below on that heart icon. I would definitely appreciate any kind of uh, support that the channel gets. But anyway, guys, I am going to go ahead and get out of here. You guys have a great one now. Peace out, y'all. Game over, man. It's game over.